story of Hanukkah in which the Maccabees, after having defeated the Assyrian Greeks, enter the temple and hope to rededicate it toward the worship of uh, the God of the Jewish people, but only find one cruise of oil that has the seal of the high priest. And the Talmud says a miracle happened that enabled that uh, cruise of oil that was only supposed to last for one day to last for eight days, giving light uh, at a dark time. And we commemorate that miracle every year on the holiday of Hanukkah by lighting a Hanukkiah, a special menorah, a special version of a menorah that has eight branches of it, one for each day of the festival, one for each day of the miracle. The goal of lighting the menorah is the Farsemet Hanes, in the Talmud's language, Pirsume Nisa, to publicize God's miracle on Hanukkah, to for us to be able to see the light that comes forth from that miracle, and even for some people to place the menorah out facing the street or in a window so that all passers-by could be able to see the light from the menorah and therefore the light of the miracle. And so what I and Cantor Vogel are hoping to do in this video is to walk through some of the steps of lighting the Hanukkah candles. Now, traditionally, we would have a menorah that looks something like this, right? There are lots of different designs of the menorah, but what uh, a kosher menorah needs to have is all of the candles in a straight row and all of them at the same level so as to not confuse how many candles are lit. Each candle needs to be able to be seen on its own. So if they are all in a row and all at the same level, there can be no confusion as to how many candles we have, right? There are lots of different designs. This isn't the only design that one could have, but nevertheless, that is uh, the ideal criteria. And once you have that kind of candle, there, that kind of menorah, there are two different versions one could have. One is this kind, which is probably the most common now, that has uh, wax candles. And the second kind, which technically is actually the more preferable kind, is uh, a menorah that uses olive oil or some other kind of oil and, and wicks. And you can still find those today. You can even get little cups of oil that you can place in a normal uh, candle, wax candle Hanukkiah if you so chose. This one though is uh, with wax candles. The custom is to set up the candles in the following way. Now, this is going to be a little bit different because I'm facing perhaps the opposite direction that uh, one would normally face to be able to show you on the camera, but imagine I was facing uh, my back toward you at the front of the menorah, right? This would be my right side, and I would start by placing the first candle on the first night on the right hand side of the menorah. We'll see in just a moment that each subsequent night we add a new candle to the left of that candle, but we light each night the new candle first. So you load from right to left, and you light from left to right. And the way we light the candles is through this candle in the middle, which is called the shamash. The shamash means the server. It's the candle that we use whose sole purpose is to light the other candles, which is why on the traditional Hanukkiah, you'll actually have nine spaces uh, for candles. The ninth, the one in the middle, is usually reserved for the shamash. Sometimes it's uh, at a different level or place on the Hanukkiah. This one, it's hard to tell in the video, but it is slightly higher than the rest of the candles, right? to indicate that it's not one of the eight candles. And, uh, and on the first night, we would take the shamash in our hand, lit, and hold it as we recite the three blessings uh, for lighting the candles on the first night. On subsequent nights, we'll see in just a moment, there are two blessings that we recite. And the cantor is going to help us by teaching us those blessings. Baruch Adonai, Eloheinu melech haolam, asher kichanu b'mitzvotav, v'tzivanu lehadlik ner she'el chanukah. Baruch atadonai, Eloheinu melech haolam, she'asa nisim lavoteinu, 
one of the candles and maybe even singing a song like Ma'oz Tzor. Ma'oz Tzor Yeshua Ti Lechana El Shabeach Tikon Beitifilati Visham Todan Hezabeach Le'etachima So what we're going to do again is we have our shamash in the middle. We load, if we were actually facing the front of the Chanukiah here, we would load from the right to the left. So we add one, two, three, four, five, and six. Okay, now, once again, we light the shamash first. And we would take the shamash in our hand. And as we recite the blessings, or after we recite the blessings, we will take the shamash and light from the newest candle to the oldest candle. And again, on the subsequent nights, we only have two blessings. The third blessing, which the cantor led for us, was Shehechianu, which is a blessing reserved for new occasions, which is why we only say it on the first night of Hanukkah, welcoming the new holiday. Baruch atah Adonai, Eloheinu melech haolam, asher kitshanu b'mitzvotav, v'tivanu l'had discouraged if during the course of lighting the candles one uh, or the other goes out, you can always go back and, uh, and relight. And it's our hope that uh, this Hanukkah enables you to bring a lot of light and joy into your world. It's not a coincidence that the uh, rabbis placed Hanukkah at this time of the year in particular, a time when it is literally the darkest time of the year. It's the time of the year where we have the least amount of hours of sunlight. And we light the candles specifically at this time so we can be reminded that it takes a little light to dispel a lot of darkness. And even in our darkest hour, we can always bring light into the world. We can always bring more light into each other's lives. Chanukah Sameach. Chanukah Sameach. From us here at Har Zion Temple. Come on, baby, light my fire. 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 Try to set the night on. 